And okay, it's six thirty. I am calling the um, meeting of the East Windsor Planning and Zoning Commission on Tuesday, August twenty third. To order, it's meeting eighteen thirty three. We're here in Town Hall at 11 Rye Street, and we have a couple of people joining us via Zoom. We have a forum with all our regular members present and our old. Under added agenda items, do we have anything? Yes, we have uh, an application, TZ2022. Dash two two. It is um, an application for an event hosting uh, okay. facility. We can um, receive that under receipt of application and just acknowledge it. Okay. Um, we had some correspondence from the selectman's office concerning a. Um, Capital improvement. Did we need to talk about that? Oh, the the SIP one. That was the program. Oh, the capital. Did we want to request anything? Do we need to send your email? Actually, under correspondence. Okay. <laughs> With that, um, I don't think we need to formally add anything to the agenda. Under legal notices, on the record, it indicates we have a new legal notice, PZ 2022-17 for 148 North Road, Unit 3, a special drug testing laboratory. The applicant is Stephen Henry. We read that into the record at the August 9th meeting, so we don't need to read it into the record again. The next order of business is public participation. Is there anybody here in the meeting room who wants to raise something that is not on the agenda? Okay. Is there anybody online that wants to raise something that's not on the agenda? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to approval of minutes. I will note on the copy of the minutes that was printed for me under starting line 30 and 31. Um, we're missing the list of members who were present is incomplete. It's correct. Nobody was absent, but um, Jim Thurtz's first name is missing. Dave Leeson's name is missing. And Joe Sauerhofer's name is missing. And they were present. So they need to be added in or corrected in line 31. And I noticed on page 11, Starting in line 436, the speaker was identified as Karen Levier, and the paragraph continues to go on with Mr. Holden requesting, and a he, and a he, and um, I do think it was a woman, not a he. <clears throat> so I think that commenters no needs a correction. The other thing I noted was on page 12. Um, there is a motion which um, approved the application for the town for the text amendment. And then hanging underneath it, it's repeated again as a staff approval motion. So it doesn't do any damage. It's just, there's the motion basically twice. 
And I'm not looking at the minutes. So um, what I would normally do is I would do a motion. I would quote the motion that you that's made at the meeting. And then I would add the actual motion that's made. Is that what you're talking about? It, it is it no. The actual motion was made and it is inserted in line 468 through basically 496. And then um, the vote is recorded. And then after the motion, it's repeated again, starting in line 500 and ending in 521. So um, it's just a, a format thing. It's the motion with verbally, and then there's a cut and paste of the staff document that the motion was made from. Okay, I would normally do that for you. I would. I would put the motion in that is verbally made, and then I would actually put in the motion that comes from the staff. Do you want that differently? Uh, it seems redundant to me. Well, oh. usually the motion that is made verbally doesn't include the specific conditions. So this, the staff memo approval motion includes conditions one through 75 or whatever. Do you want not to list that in the minutes? No, I think it should be listed in full in the minutes. But I just find this a confusing way of doing it to repeat it twice. But if everybody else is happy with that, that's fine. I don't see another way that you could. Because we're not going to norm, don't normally read every certain vote. I mean, well, certain term and condition. So that's the only way to do it. Okay. So why don't you guys think about how you wanted it presented and let me know. It's working for everybody else, so I will drop my comment. Okay. It doesn't seem to be any conflict. Uh, no, there's no conflict. It's just there's no damage done. I, I guess you're just not happy with the way it's written, but I'm fine with it. No, I just see it as duplication, but it does no harm, so it's fine. I guess that's a situation that's occurring with, with our land use minutes. Um, The motions made verbally don't normally can include the conditions other than saying that there's a condition Numbers, one what, seven what, yeah, yeah no are you you're fine, fine. Fine. leave it yes i think it's just a result of us on the fly changing a few things in the motion that compared to what was drafted in the minutes yeah, and then I see why in yeah. motion in the minutes you want to record for the no, record staff. exactly mm -hmm. all the terms and conditions. So, okay. Anybody have anything they feel should be adjusted in the minutes, or do you want to approve? Good. Yeah. So I make a motion that we approve the minutes of, of special meeting 1832 held on August 9th, 2022 at Park Hill Community Center uh, with the uh, amendment to the list of members that were present. Is there a second? Second. 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 Any discussion? Is anybody bothered by Herb Holden's name appearing in um, line 436? I, I should correct that for you, Ann. 
Okay, I'll amend my motion then to also include the modifications to lines 436 and any other references that need to be corrected to uh, correct the proper quotations. Thank you. I'll rescind my second. Thank you. <laughs> Resecond it. <laughs> any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, under receipt of applications, we need to acknowledge receipt of two new applications. The first one is PV 2022-21 for 28 Rye Street. It's a special use permit for a residential duplex. The applicant is Paul Garamino. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Garino. Garino. And the second one is PZ 2022-22. It's for 115 Scantic Road and Cemetery Road. It's a special use permit for event hosting. And the applicant is the East Windsor Historical Society. Um, that takes us to performance bonds, actions, permit extensions, and road acceptance. Nothing on that. Okay. Then we will continue the public hearing on PZ 2022-19-297 North Road. It's a special use permit for renewal for soil management facility. The applicant is North Road Material LLC. Yeah, I will start off. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, Merrick Kemet, also here with me is my father, Stanley Kemet Jr., uh, representing North Road Materials for this application. I want to start off by saying miracles do happen. Um, Russo's office was able to get us a plan for tonight's meeting. I just picked them up this afternoon, but what I got out of it is basically what's in red is just an overlay of, of what he surveyed um, overlapping the proposed layout of the um, facility. And you can see the haul roads that are being in place and some stockpiles being moved around out there. Now I did receive uh, a copy of the staff memo dated August 18th. And I just wanna go over that. I have a lot of Questions, concerns, maybe some clarifications needed on this. Um, it's stated in here that this original approval was granted in 2015. That is incorrect. Uh, this, this application was before this commission in 2018. The one in 2015 was an application by Paganelli Construction to do something very similar without actually having filling on site. And what he was going for was for a construction yard and, and the uh, management of certain materials on site. So he was, uh, the special permit was approved, but nothing ever happened out there. It lapsed, nothing moved forward. So what we did is we kind of just went forward with our own application. And in addition to the soils management facility, we went in under, I believe it's um, the uh, gravel pit regulation for excavation. We went under, under the filling um, aspect of that section. So just a quick clarification, we really are not tied to the 2015 permit. Any of those conditions really should not have been part of this or moved forward. Um, with that said, I, I see a lot of notation in here adding this contractor storage yard with over 2000 cubic yards of storage as part of this permit. That's that I don't believe is part of this application and never was. In fact, we're grandfathered in as a construction yard, which we already do processing of materials. We do crush material out there. Um, so nothing's really changed as far as the construction activities versus really what we're doing, except for that one condition that I was requesting to um, uh, clear up regarding no processing. So 
with that, we still want to continue with you know processing of the material and crushing material on site, which we do periodically. Now, I believe the original uh, permit mentioned that no processing is allowed within the subject area, which is actually what you're looking at of, of the soil management facility and um, filling area. However, the area to the west is actually the existing construction yard, which is still the existing activities happening on site, which we still do the processing and, and, and whatnot. So what we're just asking for is just have carte blanche over the entire site, because there's plenty of room to, um, to be out there and should be restricted. Also in the memo, condition number eight, which I, I don't understand, it says no expansion of this use is allowed. Use is not specifically identified as part of this approval are prohibited. That's something new I haven't seen and I don't understand if that means we're not allowed to continue our construction operation. There's a lot of intricate parts to that. And obviously, as, as mentioned before, um, we are requesting a five-year permit renewal on this instead of a three-year. And also, uh, under the motion to consider, it's Isabel B. Kimmett, not Kent. Good catch. <clears throat> So it's a draft motion, work in progress, yeah. or memo. Uh, we're doing a lot of research on the site and the history of it, trying to kind of piece together how it it came to be. And grandfathered uses in this residential agricultural zone being non-conforming. Um, I wanted to make sure you didn't lose the contractor yard, and that's why I put it in there because it was historically contractor, then it was contractor yard and <coughs> So I just want to make sure it was. I kind of assumed that was the case. Yeah. However, by putting it in the permit, if the permit ever dies, I don't want that use to die. I, I don't know how that Understood. works. I just wanted to be very clear. Um, and then the condition of non-expansion. When we when when I drove through the site with Glenn and on occasion had him driven by the site, it's apparent that there's something going on with car movement. Right, another use out there. And so I wanted to make sure that the, the, the property itself didn't get peppered with a bunch of M1 type uses in a residential zone where the landfill to be considered non conforming and have more landfill. To me, that was, I needed to really understand and digest that. That was not an easy day for poor Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's where you see this memo was coming. Understood. And, and, it's, it's marked draft for the very reason that, you know, I wasn't done. <laughs> um, so in my mind, the processing was associated with the contract with storage yard and not the soil management facility. And that's why I believe it was put into the previous staff memos and considered a condition of approval. And so that's where my, the, the original one in 2015 um, by Paganelli Construction, they were leasing or potentially were going to lease a section of our land to, to do this facility. So mm -hmm. having those restrictions on there that they couldn't have a storage yard or, or um, you know, limited to them, mm -hmm. no processing made sense for that application. But our application is actually really kind of intricate to our construction activities of the construction yard. We still have material on site. We're still coming in, you know, having it tested. We do make material for road bases, you know, not much, it's, you know, limited, but still the activity is still present. So you have your um, crushing stone out there? There's, yeah. Yeah. And historically has been there since, well, probably he was knee high. I saw like a shaker kind of, so like screener. Yeah, there's, screener. there's a few screeners out there. Yeah. We do bring in portable crushers that come in and crush certain things, and then we have that all out. We rent those machines. Oh, you rent them? Yes. The, the day I was there, I just saw the one. Yeah. Um, so, I guess what I'm hearing is there's two operations a contractor's operation and the soil management operation. 
two separate businesses on yeah. a parcel. And can you help me understand what kinds of material the contractor side uses versus the soil management? Because I guess I naively thought that it was a soil management where dirt came in, it was processed, and then dirt went out. But maybe I'm wrong. So that's exactly what, what's happening. So we have potentially, we're, well, we're going to have the bin set up so material will be coming in and be tested. And if it's um, a polluted soil of whatever type, it has to be hauled off site. If it's a clean material, it can be reused or dumped on a site. And that's why this permit is for um, the landfilling of that for, for material, not garbage, but it's just dirt. So I thought, maybe I'm wrong, there was an old landfill there. Oh, there is. Yeah. And so does the dirt just go on top of the old landfill or there's more land than it goes? There's there's the more land. If you can see, there's like, um, I think you can just put a right hand side out. Yeah. This is the landfill. Oh, okay. This is yeah. the filling area. So we're actually just going to be adding to the landfill, coming towards the construction area. But is the landfill, um, I'll say, a DEP regulated entity? And is this other filling just clean fill? So it's it, not uh, correct. Yeah, it, 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 it would be regulated if we were continuing with landfilling, which we're not, obviously. The only clean stuff is going. That's all. Here. It cannot so be. It cannot a, be polluted. Not it cannot filling. be contaminated. If we wanted to go, correct. If we wanted to go into that kind of filling, uh, then we would need um, DEP permit. Do you need a permit for the materials management? And a soil coming in, testing what's got what passes the RSRs there, and what we've been in, we've been in discussions with Deep on that one, and that's kind of one of those gray areas. And the state is really running slow right now. Um, I believe you do need a permit at the end of the day. So if you take in waste, crush it, process it, it becomes Reduction plan well, we're not we're not doing that we're not bringing in that material that's being collected and tested that's not going to be processed what we process on the on the construction end of it which is the second the historic grandfather use is really just uh sands uh gravel bank run gravel processed stone for the road bases um some millings are so out it's there it's not chunks of concrete and there is some there's some brick out there and that kind of stuff that's crushed like i believe uh herb holman has on Chamberlain road but not to that extent. It's just a pile here to get you bring in a portable machine, chip, uh, crush it, and it's out of there. Um, since you abut, I think the canyon, the mansions, bridge, yep. whatever they're called, yep. yep. Um, that's residential. Do you get complaints of dust and noise from? We do not. Okay. In fact, the funny story is that uh, the Chapmans, when they first had this application for the mansions. Um, you know, we just stand up and not oppose it, but just wanted to be very clear of what they were doing and what was next door. And they understand exactly what's there. We have not had a complaint from them, and I don't think your file shows any complaints from the mansions either. They've been there for 1940, whatever. The contractor, yeah. Our, yeah, 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 my, my father, grandfather. Forever. Yeah. I actually remember that meeting. <laughs> Frank, I'm sure you do too. <laughs> I don't remember much of it. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, I do have one. I have had a couple complaints. So, in may I ask in, in conclusion, what are we going to do with general condition eight? Are we going to leave it? We're going to take it out, or what are we going to do with it? When you asked what the question was, was going to ask. So, a couple on a couple of occasions, I have received verbal complaints and concerns about the property that um, perhaps material is coming in already and being buried. Material. I'm sure some material is coming in. I mean, we're a construction yard in which we're going to process some of that material. So I'm not going to deny that no material is coming in. We're a construction yard, so material does come in and does go out. 
Is any of it being uh, used to regrade or bury? Yeah, some some of the cleaner fill is being used. You probably noticed if you if you're driving in um, towards the landfill area, it's been all worked. I mean, you can tell the whole site's been worked. There's no vegetation yeah. almost on on most of it, um, but it takes time and, and energy to to work that kind of a site. Don't forget, we're talking about seventy acres. So it's a big site. And you're still doing sampling of your monitoring work. Uh, that is required by me. Yeah. I mean, basically, we're still trying to get our feet off the ground, and it, and it just takes so much time. And you know, last time I mentioned, we just did it, so much energy exhausted elsewhere, just trying to move forward. And the Paganelli they fell through with the deal, right? They fell through. I, I don't know. If, I think they had a contract in place and then that fell through. So there's no material being brought in and just fell under. Yeah. Is there items in here that reference back to the 2015 plan? The Meyer reference. In, in any of the terms of conditions or restrictions? I, I, that's where I started. I took the okay. last set of okay. conditions. So I'm, and, this has to get reworked then to, to take out the, the 2015 numbers and anything that may be running out of time. I don't, you got, I'm not really following the 2015 numbers where. Right there. You got, you're referencing 2015 right at the top of the page. Yes, Page two. Yes, that's, that's application summary. But right. what Merrick was claiming was that the the motion in 2015. Never. Well, I, 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 what I put in here was the 2018 approval that got approved. Mm -hmm. I didn't view the 2015 approval. Isn't that what it's referenced right there? Yeah, yeah. the second line kind of yeah, it says 15, 18, and 19. Oh, I so, see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm looking at the application drop rate. Yeah. I think so it's it referencing people. So I'm trying to say, clean this up. It would be the 2015. That never happened. I think that 2015 was just a sampling and test the soil and figure out what to do with it. Right. Our application, which is under a different name, different entity, the Kemet kind of family. Is is the same concept of the soil management facility. However, we wanted to have it stored on site. The clean material stored on the clay edges. Clarification. Right. <laughs> well, what I'm asking is, are there portions of that 2015 motion that now would not no longer apply? Just because. As Merrick mentioned, that it had to deal with a different entity. They made it bigger, so they added the filling. So the um, what I added in this motion to approve is the storage yard. And what I heard from Merrick was that this shouldn't be in there because of the contingency. The original application, the original application in 2018 was for a special use permit under the excavation section of the regulations, which was filling and excavation. No one's ever used that regulation for filling. We were the first ones to do that, but it was clearly written that way. So this statement in here about not allowing crushing, does that apply? Not come from well, that was the, that was in the memos and motions and and what was approved. Um, Even if it was approved, if they, if you look at it that way. I mean, it, we're open to discussion at this point if we can continue having that operation and change that. I mean, it doesn't make sense not to be able to process on that site. It's, are you crushing? We are crushing some material out there. Condition number nine is. The original condition said no processing in a subject area, which was almost the whole site, except for. It's not clear what the subject area is. Exactly. So it's all one part. And that's why last meeting, I just wanted some a little cleanup on that. <laughs> I guess the motion right here. Okay, I'll give you a number eight isn't even. This is 19. 
Okay, so. I think it's not that I'm just gonna grab it from the printer because I have all the changes I made since the last approval I had. So the reason why it was that condition was kept is because condition six from 2019, the application specifically allows the storage and management of soil. There shall be no, in bold caps, no processing of any materials within the subject area. So there's a debate as far as what the subject area is, but I don't think that this would be how you'd write a condition if we're allowing for processing to happen here, but not here. Yeah, it makes sense. And so this, this condition, well, it, I think you, it's not clear, but I think it, what is clear is there's no approval for process. And that tracks between 15, 18, and 19, which is why it made its way into the report. But the processing is grandfathered. Well, they're they saying they're doing it, but I don't know that. Right. Now, where it was a construction yard processing, you want to be able to do it for the landfill. We just want to, well, we just going? want to continue our operation that we're grandfathered in, but just not to be isolated into one corner when we have a whole site that we've been still using to date. If you have ever been out there, it's a big, vast area. It's, it's, it makes no sense not to be able to. What were you supposed to be doing? Eventually fill it, but it's going to take, you know, that's a million yards got to be brought into that. I'll be long gone before that even gets close. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. But was the reason for the no crushing because it's a residential area? And so how do you do the crushing? Well, well, if he's if he's currently allowed to do it over here, yeah. closest to the residential, yeah. wanting to move it over here, here it makes more sense than think, okay, you can so, only do it here, but not here. And the house next door is family owned anyway. Yeah. And the one in front too. It's a special well, permit. So you can't okay. expand a non-conforming use, even if you think it makes sense. Okay. So, you know, it's an R zone. It's an R zone. And the... Think about the things that we run in some of those other applications through the types of things that we look for as far as contours, trips per day. Uh, we get right. the truck reports. Right. Here at least it's 140. Right. And we just so didn't see that in the why it was. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that explains a lot. But you, you said expansion of the yeah. non conforming use. That's what made sense. That's, that made the so, most sense. In the in the May 6, 2015 memo for the King Crossing LLC, um, they were requesting the contractor storage yard greater than 200 square feet of material storage. It it was never filed or expired. Null and void. Um, that was for volume reduction. But, and no processing was free. Once the soil is tested and shown to be free of contaminants, the soil will be stockpiled for future use or sale. All stockpiled uh, machine storage and use must be maintained to the deep from end of property boundary. No processing of materials and substances, which is the smaller portion, and then it got expanded. Mm -hmm. Then that got carried through. Um, the 2018 approval that no process. This is where it expands for the filling. So by within the subject and area it means within here. Right. Process. And so in the in the 2018, it's um, the allowance of contractor storage yard for greater than 200 square 2,000 square feet of material storage and earth filling is what. She had listed, okay. which is what brought me to the ooh, they didn't do that. <laughs> so I wanted to put it, make sure it was covered. Um, Another way I see it too is if we don't have this permit in place, I can still crush the material wherever I want in a property. So, what difference does it make with this permit or without? Just another, it just doesn't make sense not, not to restrict us. So you can crush, but only in a specific spot is what you're saying. Under the permit. Under the permit. That's one specific spot. And which is west of the which isn't marked on the plan. 
I believe it's marked as existing um, construction activities. I don't know if it's on Russo's plan, but it might be on the original plan. Yeah. And what you're asking to, let me simplify it because I'm, what you're asking for, let's say for the sake of argument, you haul in a bunch of a building, a, a, brush, a, a brick building, and it will not fit in this area. So you want to move it over to here to crush it and move your crusher and then haul it out, process it, use it for a road, sell it to whomever. That's exactly what it is. And my father does demolition work. So that's you know, right. spot on. We do bring in that material and that's when we do bring in the portable crusher. And it just makes sense to do it on a flat area where you have room to do stuff instead of being you know, tucked away. So if, if we ask for a spot where you would potentially do this work, would that work for you guys and that would that work for the board? But the problem with that is that the site I'm showing you shows the filling area. So right. it's going to take time to fill. So everything's it's always going to be moving. And keep in mind, this is not happening every day. This is like once wow. every three months of that. Maybe this whole you know, one day or two day event. So the area where it's marked out now isn't large enough and you want to expand the area. Yeah. Well, it's not really expanding it because we well, already have the area that we're well, utilizing. No, I understand. It's just but use a different spot on the parcel. On the parcel. Yeah. yeah. You're expanding the area where the activity is from. We all know the difficulty on the site is it's a landfill. What, what do you do with the property? You know, so we're trying to make something work out of here. It's mobile pressure has wheels. I'm like, is there a way to do it without expanding the non conforming? Mm -hmm. Altering the location of the non conforming. I mean, it seems like not when you get this up again here. You want to uh, How about if, how about if we offer that it's no permanent crusher, it's just a mobile unit that could be moved around, but not a permanent crushing unit that would be on, on site, which we have no intention of doing. I think the hard part. And I'm just like I'm trying, and I, I don't have the background. We oh, we can recite all this stuff verbatim, but um, it seems like going from a pre-existing, non-conforming accessory use, a small part of an operation, to throw this activity in with the primary use of the property is a transition and an expansion. I haven't even looked at the regs for this. See how it would even be handled. If someone were coming, if, if he so it's new, right? It would, I mean, if it would even be allowed on the property, but how we would handle it from an approval perspective and the zoning regulations. When we looked at the previous approvals and the record and this plans, it didn't strike us as these discussions had happened in the sense of okay, we understand you're gonna be doing reclamation, you're gonna be bringing things in for both grades, whatever. I don't know how we work all that and apply right now. Um, there's some other ones. <clears throat> But you know we have to be aware of from a consistency standpoint of other operations, and there's this very high legal burden of establishing a non-conforming use from a statutory perspective. And, 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 that, and that's when you we're allowing the expansion of a non-conforming mm -hmm. use. And the other thing is obviously scale, right? Someone doing crushing now on a temporary basis, a couple of days, that could be a couple hundred cubic yards. Just removing the restriction and allowing it to happen anywhere. Could mean the machine runs more frequently, they process more yardage. There's a lot of other things, right? Mm -hmm. That we just need to. And yeah. you guys work with Eric and define what is today so that the volume of compression or hour. I don't believe we're expanding a non conforming use. You're just moving it. You we're not really moving it. You're expanding the area of where a non conforming use is allowed. Canada. But right now, the approval if, doesn't. If, if I pulled that permit right now and didn't go for his renewal, I could do it anywhere on my property. Is your whole property considered the construction yard? Yeah. But could you put the materials anywhere on the property that you process? That was going to be my yeah. question. Yeah. 
there's no there's no mapping. There's no uh, formal application that's ever been submitted for the construction yard because we're grandfathered in since 1801. So there's never been any. There was no definition defined boundary of where the construction yard ended and where the, the land still began. Correct, and and we're actually in the process of trying to clean this area up by doing this type of an application and trying to. You know, I just don't understand how that the processing condition makes its way onto three separate approvals if the non-conforming use allowed for stuff to be processed and put in. And what I think, from my perspective, the non-conforming use was the landfill, and they are expanding that use with the fill, the diluted soil fill. I thought it was clean. Only, just, but, just well, so we're. It meets the RSRs. It's below the RSRs, but it could have something in it. Just so we're just to be clear with, with the landfill, the landfill is technically a non conforming use. However, we do have a variance to have that use on that property, and that variance runs with the land. We're not going that route. We have no intention of going that route. But to be very clear, we have a variance in place for the landfill that entire slate if we wanted to. But obviously, you know, that's ZBA. not going to happen. ZBA approved it back in 1976. So, bottom line is, is they compiled. We're just going to say a brick Crash. building, a brick building anywhere on that property legally, as far in a brick, in a conforming use, correct? Say that one more time. They could put anything anywhere on that property. A brick, wow. we're just going to say a brick building, a pile of it. They can put piles anywhere. That's what he's saying. Well, that's, that's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. We've and it, never had a problem with. I mean, obviously, you know the family. So basically, all you're doing is, is you say you're going to take the east corner, pile a big pile of brick, roll the crusher over there, crush it, make the process, and put the crusher back over on the other side and sell that pile of, or do whatever you choose to do with it. That's what you're asking for, basically. Yeah, I, I guess that's okay. Simply put, so. My father just mentioned to me that it was two years, three years, three years, we had the plant in there to crush in three years. I thought it was more, but two weeks, three years. For me, I, I had I had the thought that there was a defined boundary between the construction yard and the, and the landfill. Yes. So if it's all considered one area, then I, I don't see an expansion. The struggle for me on that is the condition that tracks through three separate approvals, no processing within the subject area. That and that made its way into three separate special permits. And I I don't have a history on that, but it's a it's a very, very significant condition to just drop. And I'm not suggesting it's appropriate to leave or keep whatever, but I that's that's a, a component of well, I mean, is it is it established that that was a grandfathered activity? I don't know why that condition would have made its way on there three separate times through three three separate approvals if it was 223 year what you know whatever mm -hmm. it's just a, no, it's there a was a years. finding I believe Nancy Rudek had did a finding on a property that it was an established construction yard should be something in the file on that oh. But what about this variance? It's coming to light too. I wonder if that changes things. It doesn't change anything here. No, but if it means you're able to do things that like they have a variance to run, well, I think if you have a variance to run a landfall, I don't know what the history of that is, but it doesn't under D D requirements the variance. And more importantly, it would have to come in front of here you first said. before before the state. Because the state will not look at any application for a landfill without municipal approval. That's that's gospel. Seventy six. Solve all the problems. Do we have any options? Sure. I think that means then go back. Go back and do a little research. Yeah, and I also think it's a public hearing, so we need to see if anybody here wants to speak to it. And is there anybody in the room who wants to comment on this application? Yeah, I actually had a question. Um, 
I was wondering earlier you talked about the incoming soil being tested. I was wondering how was that testing done and what is it tested for and who like holds those reports, how long, kind of that whole process, if you could describe that. Also, uh, I had a second question. Um, it, it, we talked about, or you talked about the new section, or the, I guess it would be the easterly portion of the property doing the processing work. Are you also talking about filling there? And if so, like what, what kind of erosion controls would be in place on that side, on the Scanic River side? So those are my two questions. Can you help us with that? Uh, re well, regarding the testing part of it, uh, basically, uh, a lab would come in, like Phoenix Lab, would take the material, they would uh, test it for um, whatever, uh, like for arsenic and, and those type of, of chemicals in the, in the material. And if it fails, if, it, if, it, if it's above the limit that's you know um, allowed by, the, by DEEP, then it would have to be hauled off site. If it's below the parameters and considered clean material, then it could be either reused um, or combined with other topsoil and sold, or actually would be, um, be placed on site. And that's why this application is here. So it's allowed to be dumped on site. Uh, the second question was regarding the, the erosion control. Those are labeled on the plans, the traditional sill fence, uh, hay bales, I believe sill fence is in place in some areas. We have, uh, I, did, I believe we did some wood chipping on some slopes out there already. Um, so just a standard ENS that's, that's on there. What would the frequency of testing be? Do you segregate each truck that comes in or do you segregate this pile? Basically, the materials are going to be put in concrete bins right. and dumped there. Right. And then but if you have a contaminated truck in the middle of the bin, I'm trying to figure out do they check every truck or do they check? Oh, yeah. And oh, no. The, but it's every load. At the top. Okay, every, that's every, load every load, every gets load tested. has a, a test from it. So yeah. at least you guys are sure that every load coming in. Correct. Is, is, okay. Correct. Are they able to give you results on site, or is that something they have to run back to the lab? It has to go back to the lab. Is it twenty four hour turnaround? I honestly don't know the turnaround. We haven't really gotten that far. Is that what you're testing for? Yeah. So, are you? What do you? Is it direct exposure? Residential direct exposure? Like, is it that level that you're just being landfilled, or is it? Well, it's residential. Um, I believe it's A. Residents are A, um, which is clean material that that's allowed to stay on site, um, which can be dumped on site. Anything beyond that is is considered um, polluted or contaminated. So, like, who who gets those reports and like how long are they stored? Well, in, in basically, uh, the state is going to get a copy of the report, and if the town needs a report, they could have a report. It's, it's stored on site when this gets up and running. <coughs> Anything else? Um, yeah, I, I'm just kind of, I guess my, my questions are, you know, I'm just trying to understand the business and how it actually works, you know. Um, you know, I'm picturing you're going to have a job of some sort that, you know, somebody will approach you saying they have so many yards of some sort of material from some job that they'd like you to process for them. And so you would get, I don't know, maybe would it be 10 trucks in a day or one truck or, you know, like logistically, how does that work? Like, do you have, do you call this Phoenix testing lab in when you're actually going to, um, you know, receive um, material on a planned basis or is it more ad hoc? No, so, um, well, it, well, sorry, I interrupt you, but basically no, okay. um, I, I can't tell, I can't tell you what the demand is going to be if it's one truck or, or 10 trucks. I, I don't know. It all depends on demand. Um, but it's not going to be directly us and the laboratory. There's actually going to be an LEP, a licensed environmental professional, who's going to have to administer all this. So there's a licensed professional who administers the testing and, and oversees everything. It's not, there's a third party involved. It is not, it's really out of our hands. And you guys pay that third party or? Yeah. Yeah. Someone's got to pay them. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm sure of that. There's no question that <laughs> somebody's going to pay them. So the existing contractor's yard 
have they been taking in this, this I'll call it waste material, or is the contractor's yard just been from your own demolition or contracting work? We have not taken any material that needs to be tested. There's no dirty material coming into the site under this permit. <clears throat> We haven't gotten that far. We don't have a scale house in place. We don't have any bins set up to do any of this. So no, there has been no dirty material on site. Mark, you'll be taking any dredge material? Um, if it's allowed by by deep, um, maybe. I, I don't know. And if material is um, can, it is polluted but not contaminated, are you gonna? sell that like amend it and sell it for road base or if if it falls within the criteria of deep if it's allowed and clean then, then it would stay on site and we could reuse it if, if it's not if it's not allowed if it falls outside of the parameters it has to be a whole lot of it they can't stay there and so the so person that hauled it in there. i'm sorry sorry i should have asked to be recognized apologies <laughs> you have an outlet where it would go a, a, a place there there's there's some facilities out there um actually the manchester landfill is one of the sites that's that allows um bringing in contaminated soils there's a few places in massachusetts so every truck that comes in do you have to test it even if a guy comes in and he says well this is all okay you still have to test oh yeah we can't take anyone's word for it no it has to be tested if, if it and and it's not just a, a mom and pop bringing in material it doesn't work that way no. it's actually going to be off of usually a state project an ndc project in hartford um that's, that's typically or, or some type of a, a bigger project where it has to be um uh, tracked um, um yeah so i actually had a question i think of the commission uh and maybe merrick uh, could answer part of this question too um so I was curious that, uh, what the LEP's responsibilities are as far as reporting um, to the town or any other entity. And I was wondering uh, from the town side, from our zoning regs or whatever, uh, do we have like, do we have conditions that are specific to this type of facility that would be, you know, I guess you know, this is possible with any of our gravel pits, right? Or Or not, is this different then? than like Wapping Road or uh, Charmeros Pit or any of that? Like, or, or do we need conditions that are specific to this operation? Well, with the Wapping Road one, my recollection is we told them they couldn't bring things in. It's outgoing only. And um, with the Charbonneau place, they had a DEP volume reduction permit. So stuff was going in there under that and dirty Perfect. dirt is different. Yeah. And um, I mean, I understand this model actually quite well from my previous career, way too many years of dirty dirt. But um, it's the, the LEP is on board, and they actually would probably make the decision for you, correct? Like, well, the they're going to say that bin. Has to go here. This right. Certain certain sites there. can take certain materials and they will make that determination. Right. So they they'll the beauty of the LEP is they know what's being cleaned up and what's being worked on, what's cleaner yeah. than what's <laughs> the receiving site is. And and you can't just say we just all this material is going to go to one specific site, like let's say the Manchester landfill, because it costs more money to dump there than the other facilities. So it's all economics. Yeah. So and that's depending on how contaminated it is, it depends if it can even go to Manchester landfill or it's so bad it has to go. Well, even the new sort of stuff. Right. And a lot of the they times, until they, they test it. a lot of the times, um, some of the material is pre tested, mm -hmm. oh. you know, before it even would come to the site. I know I work for contamination for the contest of Ali, so I know we'd be on site before they took it off in the trucks, so we knew it was good or bad. Mm -hmm. Um, Mayor, what I'm asking there is, uh, I remember the last time this came before us, and we got a little deeper into the whole bin storage with how it was going to be covered, stormwater runoff, and, and all the other possible contamination collections. I mean, do we need to do we need that kind of detail again? 
uh, as far as how it's going to be constructed and, and all the uh, safeguards. It's, it's, the same. it's the same plan that I, I never changed anything because it's really, there's no so change. That, that will follow this, then it will continue. I know we got a lot deeper into it last time with exactly how that was going to be constructed and, and, and runoff managed. And there was a notation on there on one of the sheets, note number 10, that, me that mentioned the processing or the continued, uh, continuing processing of material. So it kind of was in the plans already. I believe it's on sheet two. Well, where are we at? Yeah, I got you. It's uh, existing historic construction operations to remain in storage management processing truck traffic and that shall not exceed trucks, 60 trucks per day, their hours of operation. Yeah, we're not asking for any changes. That's everything that was carried over. All that can be What about the other structure stuff you said you saw? Oh, yeah. The um, seven the G talks about tub grinders. When you're talking about hours of uh, operation, that heavy equipment, parentheses, tub grinders, the truck driver. Right. And a tub grinder is alluded to processing. Yeah. So that's why. I, I felt there was a, a conflict. Oh, boy. Okay. Where I think I we are <laughs> is it needs additional work on a proposed um, motion by staff. Oh, get us to vote for this. No, what? It was a question I could just look at half of that set up. So I would think what we need to do at this point is just continue this to the next meeting. While staff works on refining. Yeah, I mean, would it be would it be possible just to carry over the old conditions with a modification for processing? Well, there's things referencing the 2015 in here that you're saying you want to take The out. prior one, though, the one that was done in 2018, because nothing's yeah. really changing except for that one line item. No, we didn't close the hearing. You can ask the question. There was a vehicle we found that was headed or wanted at that your location. Um, it was a silver, uh, looked like a silver truck and it had some spillage that went on at BMW um, coming up. Sophia's positive there and the police followed the liquid trail all the way up to um, your place. Was that stuff being dumped at your place or is it just where that truck wound up? I, I don't know what it was. It's just rumor going around town and it's been bothering me. Because it happened on Sophia's Hill. I heard yeah. that too. I, I really don't know. I have, I'm really not. So do you take liquid stuff off there? Not that because I know. I heard that it was coming from uh, New Haven Harbor. N not that I know, but I just don't know. Does your father know? He, he might. I don't know. Did he bring in any material? Well, yeah, they were, they were dredging the minimum. They did also some stuff there. And that was Marie de Sousa. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're bringing in any further material, and your answer was no. And clearly, they are. They are. But, which is concerning because what's in that liquid stuff coming out of the, if it's coming from the Haven Harbor because it ships in there, there's oil spills and other stuff, you know, and that's got me concerned because of some medical conditions, you know, um, living close proximity to that property. If indeed that was true. Um, and with the Scanic River being there, and I'm not sure where on the property that stuff or how much of that stuff even got dumped. Is it going to further contaminate um, the Scanic River if it runs off? When was it tested? Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I said, was it tested? Is there There's something I heard it was confirmed tonight that it was accurate, but now I have a bigger concern now that it's confirmed. So, 
So it sounds like we have concern on the testing process. So if there is an approval drafted, um, I think we need to look at what the testing process is. Do you have an LED yet? A firm that you're planning to use, or uh, we have a couple of no, nobody yet, nobody on board. Not because we haven't really. I'm not only sure I've worked with other facilities in other towns, and they're. I'm just wondering if, if the folks that you might have already had on board have had experience with this elsewhere, um, with some of the documentation and testing is needed. So, but my only thing is, I I can't really look at this and. So just from the basis of we're just getting this tonight, like I think we need because there's some stuff on here that I, I don't know my eyes aren't good enough to look at. I will say in the last approval, they talked about the applicant being responsible for pursuing the DEP permits that might be necessary. I don't know how deep you want the town to get into the details of sampling and. You know, maybe the resources to, to check every load of every load. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think we need to I mean, maybe you want to be available upon request. That's, that's a, one of the things that I was sort of alluding to that we've seen in other places is that the document we were provided with this soil management plan, and a lot of the things that they do is they provide the criteria. That they'll use to determine if the load is good or bad, mm -hmm. some of those baselines. And so they provide a soil management plan and a stormwater, stormwater yeah. protection. Yes, yeah, some. So this is what. Yeah, three weeks. SWPVP. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if there are issues or there is, you know, these plans are in place ahead of time. So we understand how the facility will be monitored, particularly with, in this case, with the scanty thing. Um, so there may be a lot of things that once that plan is in place, and my understanding, I think is the state can look at them but not approve them. Um, I don't know. Well, the LEPs are, are granted um, the regulatory authority. The regulatory authority, and occasionally they get audited, and the people come in and do an assessment of their own. So I know that. Yeah, I mean that's a, obviously a beneficial document to have in place and prepared by those folks. Um, particularly given some of the things that we talked about. So that if there's going to be activities occurring throughout the site, at least there's a plan in place for how they're going to monitor the operation because you can't fix it once it's happened. Um, so are all the property owners around them on public water? They should be because of the land. The, the mansions are on public water. Then you have the Scanic River. And the two houses, which are owned by us, okay. are on uh, well water. Um, and there is sewer that runs on runs boarding in that area but, as well. Um, so I think at this point where we are is continuing the public hearing until the next meeting. You're amenable to that? We would need a motion. Mm -hmm. Could I, could I ask that if uh, during that time before the next meeting, if we have time to maybe correspond back with Rufan to, to iron things out so it'd be a little bit cleaner next time? That would be good. That's the intention. <laughs> Just let me know when you're ready. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we continue the public hearing for PZ 2022 19, 297 North Road, the special use permit. Renewal for soil management facility. The applicant is moved for materials LLC into our next meeting, which is scheduled for September 13th, 2022. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Made by Mike, seconded by Jim. Any Jim. discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Okay, now we have the new public hearing on PZ 2022-17-148 North Road, Unit 3. It's a special use permit for a drug testing laboratory. 
The applicant is Stephen Henry and Tamika Smith is here to present the application. Good evening, everyone. Um, so basically when it comes to this laboratory, it will be a drug testing laboratory. Um, we are franchised, so it is called Fastest Lab. Um, there's a few in Boston, that's the closest. Um, Connecticut will be uh, the first one in Connecticut. So in this lab, it's not a medical laboratory. We do not draw but blood. All we do is drug testing, DNA testing, um, as well as alcohol testing and um, DOT testing for drivers, which is equivalent to the drug testing. So patients come in? Correct. And if you don't draw blood, how do you test? Urine. Oh. So when it comes to the drug <laughs> testing, it will be urine samples, basically. Um, and DNA, um, when it comes to DNA testing, it will be hair samples. Can anybody off the street walk in or you guys contract with companies? So, yes. So that will be the plan where we'll be contracted with companies. Um, and what makes Fastest Lab different from, you know, of course, Quest, things of that nature is that you get your results in 10 minutes. Um, so when it comes to contracts with companies, that's really what's going to lead them. So you mentioned it's like a Quest Lab. It's like... It's a Correct, but the only blood difference, blood. yes, but the only difference is medically, uh, Quest does draw blood. We will not be drawing any blood. How are you going to get hair from him? Um, by <laughs> hair, or we would have to go with the legs. Um, anywhere there is hair, and if not, we can actually we'll be able to um go based off of your cuticle. So you mentioned. So there's always a way. You guys mentioned you even for vaginal plasma? Is that, is that from plasma or back plasma? Uh, it's the rear of the plasma. Next to the doctor will result where I wipe these off. Um, so it's where the nail is. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, what's the next thing? It's, it's Walter Bassel's office. Oh, that's the white thing just over. Okay. Is it on city water and sewer? Is it on city water and sewer? I'm not well, sure. sure. Oh, you well, but not water. <laughs> okay, because I'm I'm not I'm not too sure with that. Okay. I'm sure you have special dis disposal all the urine and all that. That's just what just I, don't well, I was down. asking it where it went. Correct. So um basically we would have um a company come in to basically dispose it because by law we cannot dispose it. You can't just question. Correct. Hmm. So Correct. So everything that we use, a uh, company will come in to remove it. So it's not a very big space. There's a lot of volume coming in and out, a lot of people. And that's the plan. Um, and the good thing, and what makes it so different is that because they're not there long, um, no more than 10 minutes, uh, actually it's seven minutes, but no more than 10 minutes once you're checked in. So basically they will be in and out. Just sit in the car. Correct. Appointments were scheduled online or not walking, which is your plan. So the plan is schedule online. Um, we will accept walk-ins, but that will more be like contracted related with companies that will be contracted with, because we'll also be contracted with Quest. Um, and a lot of times they go throughout the day, so we'll have walk-ins for Quest. Sometimes you gotta send somebody to pick us for duty. Do you suspect somebody that we bring in going Most to testing for fitness for duty? Okay. If they're not under the influence or something. But if you can't take blood, is it breathalyzer? Yes. 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 And, and breathalyzer. So breathalyzer oh, when it comes to drinking. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Um, it will be interesting with the new marijuana situation too. Are you testing for that? Yeah. Yes. Because it's a lot of um, companies that don't require it, even though it is legal in certain places, still companies don't require it. So we will definitely be checking for that. Here will tell you back 30 days, right? Here? Yeah. Here will actually 16 days. 16 days. Yes. So if an employee is able, you will be able to know. 
Okay, any more questions from the commission? This is a public hearing. Does anybody want to speak to this application? Anybody online who wants to speak on this or ask a question? Okay. It seems to me that there are no additional questions, so we could close the public hearing if our commission is satisfied. I make a motion we close the public hearing on PZ 2022-17, 148 North Road, unit number three, a special unit permit for a drug testing laboratory. The applicant is Stephen Hemmer. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dave. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's unanimous. Um, we have... Uh, Memo from Ruth Ann with um, general comments and um, a potential motion to approve if you're comfortable. I'll make a motion to approve application PZ 2022 12 for a special use permit application to open the drug testing laboratory at 148 North Road, Unit 3. Map 124, Block 24, Lot 011A, B3 Zone. This approval is granted subject to conformance with the submitted application, supporting materials, and public hearing uh, representation as may be modified by the Commission in this approval. And the following conditions and modifications we have findings one through three, and condition number one uh, on a memo from Ruth Ann Calabrese, Director. Yeah. 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 So, so with the modification of condition number one to read drug testing lab service. In, uh, in a memo from Ruthie and Chair Calabrese, Director of Planning and Development, dated August 2nd, 2023. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. And I apologize, I missed second. Hey, Dave. Hey. Thanks, Dave. Of course. <laughs> okay, it's approved. Thank you so much. Thank you Good for job. explaining it to us. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Have a great Thank night. You. Good luck. Um, old business, we have none. New business, none. Then we have informal discussion 27B South Main Street, mixed use, Dave Palm. I am here representing the Connecticut Silk Company. I'm the administrator of an estate. It was my sister's property. Uh, I kind of guess I need some clarification or something the way that I'm reading the zoning rules. We have 27A is the bottom unit. It's currently Cindy Soap Cottage is there. There's an upper unit, which is a different condo, 27B. It's vacant now. In the past, uh, when I took the place over, there was something somebody renting up there for a residential use. And before that, Mary Kay was there. And I understand before that, there was other people up there renting it. It's set up for a full apartment. It's got a couple uh, bedrooms, full bathrooms, kitchen, washer, dryer. Uh, the way that I'm reading your zoning, uh, this is zoned, it's 1,511 square foot, the upper unit. And it's zoned uh, commercial. And we want to try to convert this over to like a mixed use. Your zoning rules say, and I could give you the page on it. It's on page 33. It says residential units. This is in B1 zone. Residential units may be permitted above the first story and provided the units are not exposed as part of the main facade. 
Below first story in commercial buildings, those units below first story must be limited to studio apartments that exceed 900 square feet in area. Uh, this is a 1500 square foot unit. Now there's another unit up there that was approved, I guess about 15 years ago. It's 27B Pasco Drive. And that's a 1200 square foot unit. So, so the location where the property was at is right in front of Pasco Commons. It's, it's right, right on the main road. road. It's a detached it's unit. Good. It's not part of the uh, almost think that, that it's was part of Pasco's Commons, right? But it's yeah. just by yeah, itself, you, you unlike all the other ones. Pasco's Commons and makes you turn it again. And the reason I'm asking is we are will be selling the building uh in the future. And we did have people that came in and looked at it that wanted to open a business below and live above. And I just want to make sure everything's legal on it to do this. You know, the other one, like I said, 27B Pasco Drive, there is marked a residential 1,200 square foot. The whole usual castle town would go along. Yeah, they're called a, a condominium. Yeah. Ours is called a commercial condominium. Well, I actually thought that that was, I thought that that whole building was a part of the hospital. Yeah, it, it yeah. was, yeah. And the thing about this, the one, I did get a copy of the building permit, the one at 27B, they actually went in for a permit to make it into a livable space. This thing was built like that. Like I said, it's got two bedrooms up there. It's got bathroom, shower, and it's got a full kitchen. But we just want to make sure everything's on the up and up on it when we do it. And whether that, whether it's on the up and up now, or whether I just need something changed there. And uh, like I said, I'm, I don't know the way it's written. First, I was looking at it, it says 900 square foot. And I thought, well, it has to be 900 square foot. Yeah. It can't be above, but the way it's worded, 900 square foot below the first one. This is above. Pasco Commons has some units that have technically like three floors. You got a basement on yeah. the back side of it, then you've got kind of a ground level entry and then yeah the, so that's where we're talking about the stuff below the yeah ground level. yeah this actually this unit has its own separate entrance too but there's some other paths that are bigger than that square feet yeah they're, they're just necessary. all mixed everything up there first floor is 912 second floor which we could they identify as an apartment 667 and that's on which one that's um, yours. Now, see, mine is South Main Street. Oh, that's 27B South Main. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is the building. Yeah, right? yep, that's the building. Yeah. Yep. So I thought that was even part of Pasco's already. Yeah. We pay condo fees to Pasco's, but it's, I think it's like the only one that's just separate like that over there. So is there a way to fix that? Is there a way to fix that anyway? So when we had um, someone come in last year mm -hmm. for a special use permit, yeah. mm -hmm. for a special use permit, mm -hmm. right? So he wanted the workspace, right? He wanted to have yeah. residential on the main floor, right? Yeah. Yes. But that was a three floor one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He had three level entrance, right? Because it was multi. So is this building in a different zone than Pasco Commons? Mm -hmm. No. It should be uh, beats B1. I'm not sure what building we're looking at, but that whole that's that's the building there. It's out in front of the shouting front. Yep, yeah. each grand is great. I think it's already supposed to be there in the first place. <laughs> yeah, because it seems like it was built like that. Roberto is right there. Yeah. That's the building. Right you know, we don't want to like say, Hey, I want to condo somebody living there all the time, but I want the option. If somebody did that bought the bottom part and they wanted to live above it, and I would like to keep it mixed use because maybe somebody would want to make it as an office. It's tough because it, it's not going to be ADA compliant. There's no elevators. There's no way to put one in there. Yeah, we're talking about this, and that's what we encourage anyways down there. Yeah, business on the bottom, the top. It would always be a business on the bottom. Just that one part. I mean, this should be regulated the same as Pasco. Yeah, even though it's not. Part of Pasco Commons, it should have but it, it is. But it is part of Pasco. Yeah. So I'm saying part. Yeah. They overlooked it. Yeah. 
Don't change to become no, part of that. Oh, okay. It's in the same zone. Yeah, I got the zone map, but it's just uh, well, it's hard to tell. We get got a little bit of zone map, but it's in the uh, the pink area. So I think we can do it in the office. So it, because it, the living units are larger than what the regular would expect for minimum, accessory apartments. For the minimums required. Okay. Is it a maximum? You can't. We don't have any caps on how big some So these are um, accessory to a commercial use. I think that's where the logic came from. But then we had pulled his building permit or uh, his zoning permit for the accessory department issued for the 1200. What's the section that you're looking at there? I was supposed to look at the report page 33. Oh, it's the same. Excuse me. The back side of the building it looks like the the living dwellings have a ground floor exit also. Yeah, that's on the first floor. The second floor has two balconies. There's so no on the back side of the building. There is a an apartment on the on the ground floor. No, no, that's a business. The ground floor. Yeah. No, no, I'm just. I didn't know if this was a, kind of like a duplex and oh. and because those are like residential doors. They're not commercial doors. Six. If you're looking for the section number in your zone, I think it's seven five zero two. So it's all residential units in commercial buildings require special use permits. So, the number of bedrooms? It would be two. Okay. 800 minimum square foot, what we had there, which we don't have. It's kind of conflicting with the other portions of our reg, but this is where we took out the minimum size, but this is an accessory. Yeah, I think this is just trying to make sure that they don't take a commercial unit and cram a residential one. You know, just yeah, making a, making a six hundred square foot little. Yeah, place. it's just going to stay its own unit. That's it. So but it's there. So all of these. So now that we can do accessory dwelling units, I mean, we, I know those don't apply to the commercial space the way it gets written. We're doing that administratively by meeting. But this in here says special use permit. Gotcha. And so the unit is existing now? Yes. Okay. And they're just sure. trying to. Yeah. Just trying to make it legal. <laughs> I want to make sure it's legal. It was part of the original Pasco Common approval issue. Part of that. Yeah. 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 So the apartments went in. Then, right? What's that? The apartments went in with the, the yeah, building. yeah. I'm assuming, and it's properly referenced on the assessor's card. Yes, the town. Okay. The only thing, yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to just make sure it's all legal. I don't want to mislead anybody. If they bought this the building downstairs and said you could live up there, then there's back on me again. No. I could um, write you a letter from the planning office. That would work. The yeah, just something for our file. Yeah. That would be, I appreciate that. Yeah. You'll sleep better tonight. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I'm up at four o'clock anyway, it doesn't matter. So I might go to bed. Any other questions on us? That's it. Okay. Good. All right. Good All right. Thanks so a lot. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, next is informal discussion 118 Prospect Hill Road, Carl Crane and TJ Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. We can share. Do you have to share? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I do have one more problem. I thought it was something. Uh, good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is TJ Baresi. I'm a licensed engineer and air surveyor and principal owner of Baresi Associates. I'm here with Carla Crane uh, talking about the property known as 118 Prospect Hill Road. Um, ultimately, uh, just as you know, this is informal. We're going to plan to come through this before this commission with an application to get a permit to run a trucking terminal out of this property, uh, along with an, another, an existing use, which is a um, playscape mulching processing use, which is currently used uh, right now on the back of the property. Uh, here's Prospect Hill Road. Um, Sophia's Plaza is right here. Um, the old movie theater is kind of right here. Uh, the shaded area is the subject property. It's actually two parcels, actually three parcels, all owned by uh, Mr. Mr. Crane. Uh, as you can see, uh, this property is accessed off Prospect Hill Road. Uh, in addition to that access strip, the two other pieces of property uh, that share that access strip. One is a uh, property utilized by Eversource. Another piece is a property utilized by Cheeseman. Um, so in the end, uh, whatever's happening at Cheeseman, whatever's happening at Eversource, whatever's happening on this property, they all share that access to uh, Prospect Hill Road. So everything needs to be able to uh, work together with, with each other. Uh, on page two, a little blow up of this property. Again, here's the access strip, here's Eversource, here's Cheeseman, uh, this is his property. Right now, there's an existing building on the property. Many, many years ago, this building and this property was used as a trucking terminal. Uh, then as time went on, things changed. I think he terminated the trucking use at one point. Uh, I think he used the inside for sawmill at one point, uh, logging operation at one point. Carl can speak about the history a little bit better than I can. Um, and right now, uh, the building's not being used for trucking terminal. But there is a, an area in the back here that's shaded. Uh, like I said, he leases that area out to a company that makes the mulching for playscapes, like some type of safety mulch that goes on the, on the playgrounds. That's what's taking place right here right now. He wants to maintain that use and, and keep that uh, common tenant there. You're going to clean up this building, uh, uh, reconvert it into a, a trucking terminal. There's 20 loading docks associated with that building right now. In addition to those 20 loading docks, you'd like to, you'll add uh, 14 and 14 uh, spaces for, for trailer parking. Uh, and that would be the combined use of, of his property. So you're going to go out here, share that access with Cheeseman, share that access uh, with uh, Eversource. We met with uh, Town Planner, the Assistant Town Planner, maybe 10 days ago or so, kind of share, share with them what, what our, our plan is. They recommended we come to the commission here informally. Prior to that, we did meet with a, uh, a traffic engineer, um, got test from the Hesk associate, Associates, told them what, what our plan is, told them about the existing parking here, existing parking here, which kind of uh, 
you know, before you send trips per day and generating traffic. He's going to uh, do a traffic study for us and um, communicate with OSTA, whatever needs to be communicated with OSTA regarding uh, the uh, the traffic counts and and what kind of uh, permits we might need, uh, we might or might not need with, with those stuff. Uh, Pearl's here tonight. He can share with you a little bit more history, what his uh, full intention is, uh, and how trucking terminals work and whatnot. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, comments, or concern, we're here tonight to have that discussion prior to to uh, submitting an application. What kind of what kind of business is going to go here? I didn't hear the first part of it. Yeah. What, what kind of business um, for trucking are you all in? Uh, just general freight. I want to rent it out to a trucking company that wants to put freight there and transfer it from one truck to another and consolidate it. So and an LTL like Ross Express or DHL? Whatever that company wants to do. You know, if they want, they need a place to unload freight. Sometimes they got to hold on to it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes half a load here, half a load goes there. And uh, to mix and match it, put it together, send it to where it has to go. Yeah. Um, just regular trucking terminal type stuff. It was a trucking terminal in the beginning. You can see it's a trucking terminal. Oh, there's no picture there. But um, I, I'm a forestry guy. And uh, I at one point changed it and I put a sawmill inside. So that changed it to a forestry use. And um, it just, it worked out very well, but it's just everything about it. Uh, Running that business, getting the help, just doing everything about it. It's easier to rent it to a trucking business. I'm not getting any younger. And uh, uh, that's what I want to do is be able to just rent it and maintain it like that and continue mm -hmm. to keep the uh, mm -hmm. playground fiber guy in the back because he's, uh, he's a good tenant and it's pretty simple stuff. They bring in wood chips and they run them through a tub grinder one time and they load them back in the trucks and sell them all over the place for certified playground fiber for playgrounds. You don't know all about it, I'm sure. And so that's what they manufacture back there. It's pretty simple. And uh, the trucking business, uh, same thing, you know, just parking trailers. And sometimes they sit for a month with freight in them. Sometimes they get emptied out, sent back out on the road and every different way it works in that business. You can only imagine. And a lot of switching freight around five pallets here, three there, and, you know, just that whole kind of thing. And that's what we want to do there. And that's what the building was originally built for. And, and, and that application came back in what, like probably five, six years ago? Was that, that I can't remember seeing that. Uh, for, to turn it into the terminal. Have the sawmill there? Before the sawmill. That... Yeah, because we did that probably back in the 90s, oh, wow. something like that. <laughs> Frank was here. Frank was here. Frank. My, my other question is, is there a light coming out of that? Uh, that no. no light right there, right? No. So I, I never even noticed. I, I drive there. I drive through there three times a day. I never know. Pull in sometime, uh, but it's it's in the back. It's I know, in the back. It's nicely it. buffered and everything. And like I say, it was only the truck and terminal before that. Yeah. And um, I originally bought it because I had trucks on the road. And I was looking for a place with two doors, and I found this with 20, and I fell in love with it. The doors were hanging off the side. And uh, I actually, when I went in, I went, holy cow, the green stamp driveway. It used to be the green stamp store there, wherever source has been. When we were kids, you know, they were, yeah, green stamps were everywhere. And so getting gas, it must be you're taking your stamp, and the kids so take kind of, them. It's kind of like the Newbury Road, the yellow truck, the thing kind of truck in terminal. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that's the same idea. So the reason I had um, you come in to talk to the commission was a couple of different parts. Do you remember the conversation we had about terminals not being defined in the regulations and that warehousing and distribution was similar use and you were, your response back was that a special use permit would make sense um, given the proximity of residential uses and whatnot. Uh, subsequent to that, Keep in mind, we are These next to another trucking terminal. These gentlemen came in and they had their their plan, and their initial plan was to be much larger in scale, as far as the number of trucks, and it was going to be just that use. But um, in order to minimize impact and trigger the need for road improvements, 
um, potentially um, decided to constrict the size of the terminal space and keep the, the use that's out there now, but move it so that a site plan was issued for that sawmill mulch volume reduction, right? So this is a modification to a trucking terminal. So that it gets it gets complex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then there's a, this job out here, you know, with thoughts of potentially doing something else, as you had shared with me, maybe uh, cell storage. Isn't that so a go right there, though? What's that? No, that's flat. Oh, it's flat. Oh, it is flat. Yeah. Then yeah. it drops down. Then it drops down. So it's a fuel emission station. Yeah. Where's the property that was leaking? Oh, that was water running out of salt fields. So, um, now, that's all right. The vision for the property is. Years ago, we had water runoff yeah. on the, in the plaza. Oh, yeah. There's a plan about you plant okay. grass and rectify it and did all that. that, I, that I guess so. They, that's the property. Yeah. Um, there, there's there's a, a, a soil that goes around. I yeah. Guess, uh, that's the right cool. yeah. Yeah, that was an improvement we made. But, um, you know, the road, everything coming in, everything is the same as way before I owned it. So you must have fixed all that because we haven't heard anything from you at all. I mean, so you must have read the slide. That was probably yeah, seven there's years a, ago. That's a small ditch that goes down yep. and takes it away, and nothing can go on there probably. Mm -hmm. Nothing oh, ever did that with really much of the elevation. That was that way. Gotcha. Is that our home that's right in that dugout right there? Yeah. Wow. That's right cheap. Yeah, that's 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 that would be Jared Cheese, and that's the other trucking company. Yeah. That's the only that's the terminal next to it. Mm -hmm. And so this is owned by Everstore and Theater. And then we use our properties on Pop uh, Shack Hill Drive. No, Children. 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 I think that property's with them. But this is Tri K R Road. Oh, okay. So USA Road. Uh, if you do go back here, it's very wooden, yeah, very long. It's old town. Yeah. So there's no residential anywhere around. No. no. It's all you would say, all the off road. road, and then there's it's a terminal, and the store. It's all on five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you got out here. So it's actually a good place for mm -hmm. thing. Like I said before, you, it's, you have all these trucks on there. You never really know the trucks going up there. You never really. It can handle a lot more. Yeah. I mean, it really can set up. Oh. Yeah. Prospect Hill. So if they were to come in with um, a special use permit for the multiple uses. Traffic study. Well, one thing I, I'm take I would take a look at because normally in a in a tractor trailer pattern you have a counterclockwise drive pattern around a vehicle because you don't want to do blind side backs right on the building so. You're going to need to have a dry aisle path over by where the mulch processing area is. No, I'm saying once they back up to the building, to back up oh, okay. onto the building, they want they want to travel in a counterclockwise pattern. Well, whoever you know, were to run the whole thing and say, okay, this is the way we want to do it. One guy might want to go this way, might want to go that way, but it's not usually in, trucks don't want to back up blind side. They want to back up right on, on, the, on the left side. Yeah. So you want to have, you've got to have yeah. a pattern. For allow them to travel it, around. Anybody can do that. So what I'm just saying is where they you need the space. Right. So the, the loading docks are here. Yeah, the loading docks are along here and along here. Traditionally you need hundred like this. You need 120 feet from the building to the to the unobstructed for them to be able to back up uh, 53 foot trailer. Okay. I don't know what it is from here to here, but it is what it is. <laughs> with whatever's there. I mean, that exists. Those loading docks. Anybody can walk them out at the site anytime, just drive in. You're invited. And you'll see it's a trucking terminal and it works. Well, it's just trying to give you some logistical things okay. and then look at your distance where your parking truck is. Because if you don't leave enough space between your parking up top and the building itself, so I'm not going to be able to back onto the building. So I don't get enough room up there. I understand. Yeah. And, uh, you go out there and see it. I mean, there's plenty of room to do all that. I don't have a measurement right now for you, but um, you've got trailers there, trailers backed up into here, and there's plenty of room out there. 
the properties. This this is the pad. This is not the building. Right. The building is here. Okay, right. and kind of it looks like yeah, it that, looks like there's a it's that, is that a 40 foot pad or how big of a pad? It's a 50 scale, so that's 50 100 right there. That's the mm -hmm. Uh but yes, yeah, this is an overhang and this is an overhang for you know when you back in and open up the doors and water yeah. and weed away or still you know, yeah, keeping everything dry and all that. So we we do have that flow. Um, yeah. Like I say, that's what it was really. Yeah, I, back. Back. I just yeah. put it on the website. Okay, yeah. yeah. really not real. As an engineer that I work with, you're relying on these two cameras. I'll get you a number. You tell me. I'm 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 measuring right into the final station. We'll answer theirs. What's the this? What the upper this is? You got plenty of them. You got ours. Roughly 122 just to the start of the pile from this picture that was taken in December of 1846. Oh, this year, <laughs> right? December of this year. Yeah, I've been doing it for 38 yeah. years. So, uh, you know that. You know uh, that. You know, yeah, I mean, it's like, same thing with parking or any of those spaces. They're going to be trust this the back side of this printer. You know, right here, right? I don't think you're you trust that. No, you you know, know, you know, I can't trust that. I would be safe for this right here. But no. even for a guy coming to walk the photo, you have to park in one of those spaces. Uh, when you can, you can, it's going to need to have room. That's all the phone that runs into the motion processing area. And you get the back into that very first space. All right. Yeah, you're welcome to come on from the ground. More room that it looks like on the front back. Plenty of well, I'm just when you start defining boundaries between tenants, the tenants, if your plan requires them to drive onto the other tenant's property, that's something you're going to have to demarcate that. So you, you know you can't yeah, put your yeah, operation yeah. here. Yeah. Need need the spring room. Right. I mean, you can't take up somebody else's space, but the tire goes out of there, and you know, just, it's not. It's usually to get him in that spot. He needs a lot of extra room to swing forward and, and back in. Yeah. I understand that. Okay. Many trailers in yeah. there. There's room for things. I've seen Carl's stuff. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, I think. Uh, <laughs> Skitters. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm a forestry guy. Yeah, that's yep. why I changed and put the sawmill in there. And um, now uh, I still do the forestry stuff, but just the whole thing that a lot of people working in the sawmill, it just got so hard to find people. Uh, I got some stories, but I won't bore you with them. But they're well, they, fun. They don't like servants like these. Uh, yeah. Different, it's different, it's right? Probably is that say paved or what's the bottom of this? This is all paved right here, and this is uh, millings that we got permission to put down some years ago uh, when we just improved the property. This this is millings out here. This is all paved in here. Of course, <coughs> this is all paved. How wide is that that road? Texas road. Oh, um, so I can, I'm guessing I'd say like about 40, 40 or 50 feet, but I, I can measure it. Is it too late? Oh, God, yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's made for trucks. It's made for trucks. Come on, then you let it say drive in there anytime. And uh, there'll be trucks in and out of there. The Cheeseman is operating right now. And there's been all kinds of trucking companies in there. When I bought the thing, it was paper from. Yellow Freight, Old Dominion, they all rented in there at one time, starting in the mid-60s. Mid they were all in and out of there, you know. So, and them guys back then, they were, you know, they moved a lot of trucks in there. They were a lot smaller, though. <laughs> Pardon me? They, they were a lot smaller. They started with 28 footers, and now we're up to They've 50 gotten longer, yeah, no doubt about it. But that's the way it is. Trying to get your What's that? Like, the green stamp. Um, I remember going as a kid. Right, my mother, we were kids, kids player. Going to the SNH yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. We were talking about it today. Senior yeah. staff. Green stamp? Yeah. That's the same building? No. No, yeah. SNH and green stamp. Yeah, that's building. Used yeah. to be to the there right. Yeah. We're, 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 right. We're, we're, we're resources. Yeah. 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 And if I'm not mistaken, that was their distribution center. Yeah. You guys must have talked to me. We do, okay. yeah. That was 1970, <laughs> I was 1974. And you lick all oh, those stamps and, and a pile of bone like this and <laughs> go over and get a keychain or something. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> you know, when you're young, you look at them things like money, like, oh, I can, I can get something with these. It's valuable, you know? So when you're five, it means something. We're all, we're all dating ourselves. I can start dating myself. I still have camping, like, land lips or have camping pots and pans for this. Nice. We should get them down at Geisler's to stand. Oh, yeah. Really so, um, it's, it's a great support. place for all that stuff. No residential. We're off the road. Um, it's a great place to do that stuff. We don't bother anybody. You know, not going no worry. Yeah. 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 No. Well, I miss that one. No. Unfortunately. Are they going to? I know they can build it in about eight years, but I know they want to take it for him and domain some period. It's a shame that the movie theater is gone and so it's just sitting there like that. I own two or three houses across the street when the casino bought that. Oh, you're the one. Oh, you're the other one. Yeah. Yeah. You're the one. <laughs> it's okay. It was a long road. Good for you. It was a long Good road. Let me tell you, I struggled to hang on to them things. And I had people that knew a lot about real estate that kid, dump them. Leave them to the town for the taxes. You're working your butt off for it. You're not going to get no way. These are guys that knew stuff about real estate. And I said, no way. And die with those things, and then the casino came along. So the yeah, experts don't always know everything either. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was really told that by many people. You so you guys would have owned it now. You made more money than town made. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so looks like special use permit for both reasons. All right, thank you. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Uh, feedback. We'll be back. No worries. I guess. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yep. Good luck. And like I say. You, anybody can drive through there anytime you want. Thank you. Thank you. People I don't want to drive through there do it anyway. Come on, <laughs> come on down. Stop if you see me. Come on. Um, we got a memo from First Electric Company. Yeah. 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 Does anybody have any thoughts? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, for our speech, the mission, I don't think we have one improvement. Thank you very much, everyone. I think you have to go to a conference in Vegas or something. They go through that? No. That's why I don't think we have a conference in Vegas. LA? <laughs> no. Okay. I'm sorry. Campers are not fellas. Let's not talk about getting free trips. There's some tea in the room. <laughs> okay. So we have nothing to submit. Now, under business meeting, warehouse, claim district, regulation discussion. We, um, you know, we have interested parties all been from Tom Tom Zoom to support town. Um Warehouse Point Design District. We uh, had a meeting a couple months back, May, I think, where um all them who came in with Tim Coon to talk about a conceptual plan for a parcel down on Bridge Street and um it kind of sparked Oh, fire in the belly on getting some warehouse point form based code put together. And Mike has um, put together this document for your consideration and really looking to test the waters here on this is as it's written and the form it's taking. Does it meet your expectations as far as before we go too deep into the details? I think it's a really interesting way to go about it. Um, and I'd asked before if it works in Warehouse Point, would it work in Broadbrook Center too? Or is it you only do one design for each village so you wouldn't use the same code for both? I mean, we certainly have more data for Warehouse Point from yep. the planning study, but. This really tries to marry the components of a form based code without writing a form based code because form based codes are really hard to administer 
and as I was telling Ruth, they generally require you to make very key assumptions. And if any of those assumptions are turn out not to be correct, or you have an entire wholesale change in the market, let's say COVID or e-commerce, the whole code becomes useless. So the, the structure of this, and this is, this is a draft, um, is to essentially make clear, there's, there's three great sort of sets of standards. There's site development standards, which is sort of what, we're, what we normally think about as far as the way the site is laid out. There's site design, and then there's site building amenities. And the idea is that we look at all three of those things. And if you get to the, the very end of the document, you'll notice that we have something called expedited permitting, which basically means if we tell you that it requires a special use permit, but you include all of the things from the three categories, site design, which you have to do, um, but also building design and, and amenities, right? If you're including an outdoor space, if you're including benches or if you're pedestrian improvements or a park lift or whatever, you do all the things that we want, even the things we can just encourage, you can reduce your permitting path from a special use permit to a site plan. And so we're creating that to, to, is sort of the key component of the incentive here. Um, if you don't, wants to do those things, then we're going to send you through the special permit process. So, you know, we don't have the same, as we talked about, the same market demand for massive redevelopment here like other areas are seeing, right? This is not Simsbury Center, this is not Glastonbury or West Hartford. So we need to encourage it in another way. And one of the ways we can do that is allowing them to skip the public hearings, the notices to abutters, and this big question mark from a tenant perspective as to what the commission is going to require. Whereas they just design for these things, they show up with a plan that meets the criteria, and they, they already they know exactly how the process is going to go. Um, so that's sort of the main, the main way that this is going, right? We have three tiers of permits, zoning permit, site plan, special permit, and things are required or encouraged. And if they get situated under their site plan and they want to do for a special permit, they can expedite their process. The other piece that I think was, I, I put in here that really is for discussion, but it's not something that this commission can really do much other than support and recommend. A lot of towns have, um, I won't say a lot, some towns have what I'm calling a property rehabilitation tax deferral program. And they don't do it everywhere, but they do it for specific areas. The town could do it everywhere. And I think it actually would dovetail nicely with um, consideration for the blight and property maintenance code. But if you own a property and you make a significant investment into that property and you're improving the way that it looks and you're you're taking it from something that is detracting from the area to contributing to the area, that significant investment, the town is, is going to prorate that increased assessment on your taxes for a period of time to allow you to recoup that investment. Um, so it's we're not reducing taxes that are paid. Um, so if you're paying that's a presentation, Jason, that's Tim. Okay. So that's a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit more complicated, and that that those monies are used for certain things. But the idea is, your property is worth hundred grand, and you're going to put forty or fifty into it. We're going to take the increased value based upon those improvements, and we're going to give you a break on them for a couple of years to allow you to recoup that massive investment. Um, and and there are towns that use that as a way to encourage people to spend that money, and um, I think yeah. it's worth considering. That wouldn't be within the jurisdiction of the planning commission nope. to adopt. No, nope. it would basically yeah. be something that we could discuss. And if you thought it was important, it would, it would be sort of brought forward to the board of selectmen. But property investment is something that is a struggle in our house point. Yep. And, and the only reason you don't put money into it is because it doesn't make financial exactly. sense. Exactly. So the one. So, thing we can do there is we can make the uses, we can make the properties more viable in the way in which you can use them. But as we've seen in other cases, if there's, there is no financial case to making a property look better than it needs to, to, to justify whatever tenant's gonna go in there. And we don't wanna be drafting a code that's just gonna strong our people into doing that. That was not what we were trying to do. So trying to create a mechanism by which we can encourage people to invest in their properties and they're going to be on a short-term basis rewarded in some way 
by not having to get whacked with a new tax bill because their property is now doubled. Oh, this is only for the warehouse plant district. Yeah, I mean, for, for now, the, I mean, the, the deferral program could be for anything. Mm -hmm. for the whole town. Or it could be for commercial, or it could be for certain corridors. That would be up to the board of selectmen. But I think it's a tool that is worth exploring for this. So it's basically set up as tax abatement for businesses just for residential. For well, for this it would be, or whatever you, you know, development in certain areas. So right. It's just, and in three to five years you start paying the current value. Right. Oh, right. Right. But the value of it is down. So let's right. So let's say you had to put a bunch of money in up front. You get a tenant in there. You start collecting that rent. It lets you catch up on some of those loans you might have had before you get whacked on whatever the increased assessment is and anything else, especially if you're having to do, I mean, now our site design standards require you know, parking lots and all these other things. To, it's not just, let's get them in there and put a sign up. Um, we'll, give you, we'll give you a break here, Dak, to bring investment community. And it's, right, and it's based, it would be, number, uh, yeah, number, number. it would be based upon the increase. Right. It's not gonna be, we're gonna give you a break and we're gonna stop collecting what we are. So we're not going. The town's not going to lose out on taxes that they're. So basically, if it's worth a hundred thousand dollars for now, for the next, we'll just say, for the sake of argument, five years, I'm only going to pay a hundred thousand dollars. The value of my house is a hundred thousand dollars, so it's ten thousand dollars a year, right? Versus if I put two hundred into it, now you're going to tax me the current value that you feel it is, and it's based on the increase, half a million dollars. So yep. gives me time to right to work out my, you know, or gives guys like Dave. Time to recoup their basically best. Yeah, three. the assessor won't see the improvements for three years. Like it. Sort of like a three year plan. Right. And, and that, that's got nothing to do with this. I just think it's an important thing to consider. But um, yeah, I mean, so there's a, we've included and pulled out a lot of the standards which come right out of the warehouse points. We're not inventing this. The design standards, as far as some of the things that are mentioned here, um, are, are from the, the warehouse point planning study. If someone's building a new building, then we want to be clear of what we expect. But if they're coming in and investing in an existing building, we don't want to just double their price tag to get yeah. something done. Yeah. So we want to strongly encourage some of these things. Um, the other thing that we've talked about is the, the warehouse point planning study envisioned nine zones, and each zone had its own use. I, I think we talked a little yeah. bit about the analysis. There were some zones, but the only difference was one use. This use has this, this, and this, and this use is exactly the same. I think the intent was to try to make a lot more non-conforming uses. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, it just, it makes it complicated. And then there's a lot more conflict with the existing commercial rec that we have, because we have this small area that's a commercial zone that has 90% of the uses, which we list in all these other zones that we bought in the business corridor. So um, we basically, the, the, the goal here, provided the approach makes sense to you thus far, is to create three zones. But, and we still have to kind of figure out how it will lay out, but a, a core, a transition, and a periphery. Um, we can't create cohesiveness if we have things chopped up into nine different. Are we still going to be able to allow for development of non conforming use then? So I'm not sure. I, I drove through Warehouse Point with like maybe a week or two ago, and I don't have an inventory of all of the uses, but um, I don't know how much is going to be made not conforming by what's happening there. Um, if there's some really intense sort of maybe automotive, I know there's a little bit of that right by the bridge. Yeah, there's one garage right by the bridge. That's not conforming. I don't see a way for that to become conforming. It wasn't in the Warehouse Point study. I don't think so. They can continue to up there. It's right here. It's that big building right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a rendering for the <laughs> So other than that, I mean, we're allowing for retail, multi-use civic government organization. I'm not sure what else is there. There's things that you want to so bear this, in mind. That's kind of going down the commercial side. What about the residential side? So the residential side, single family detached um, is your standalone single family home, which is a which is a prohibited use. So um, we can flip the way that we deal with that if we want to 
I guess you just want people to be able to do what they normally would in a residential area without. Somebody wants to add a garage, and then they're already they're already, they're already yeah. over on the on the total square foot. Right. So we can right. create specific um, language if you want for that. There's a line, and the commission has flexibility in how you deal with that. At the addition of a shed doesn't make the single family home more single family. Adding an addition with another three bedrooms might. Um, and so I guess we'll have to figure out where yeah, that line at is. At least there easy. should be a path, you know, they're going to just not carte blanche and no. Right. You know, at least give them a path to come before us or, or whoever they have to speak to to, yeah. you know, speak their case. So that would be a special permit. You could do it that way. But um, we can. I thought the problem with the river we had with the river. Well, that was the other water. Yeah, that was a whole other thing. Yes. Having to be built above the anything built over there has to be above the water line. Right. Um, so the and but so that would still apply. Yeah. yeah. That's right. It's not our mortgage. Mortgage. You're going to be. And so we have three zones here: core, transition, for yes, which we're calling it for now. We're not obligated to zone every piece of move, every piece of dirt that side of the highway into those areas there's existing zoning there, right so that area that's along the, the Connecticut river there that may not be appropriate to fall into one of these three and it may need to remain whatever it is now flood and fire because we're, yeah nothing's going to happen unless you want to go through big development on stilts yeah yeah and that seems i mean that parcel that whole area is not very far away from being a great there's, there's but there were so many different property owners it became impossible yeah. Okay. Yeah, the interesting the, the, the folks with the houses right one side the road, road, on the other side of the street. Yeah. 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 Uh, but encouraging, I mean, everybody talks about coastal resiliency, and obviously we're not a coastal town. The only answer to coastal resiliency is to stop building along the coast. Right. <laughs> Same applies to the Connecticut River. If we're if we're worried about damage to property, well, we've got to do everything we can to prevent it. So we really shouldn't facilitate the <coughs> on that side of the road. Watch Street. Watch Street. Watch Street. Watch Street. Watch Street. Watch Street. We thought that was considered to be title and follow the road. So really the idea here is, does the approach make sense? It still needs some meat on the bone. Trying to make their more clear with graphics and pull from the warehouse point planning study without relying on so much of a document. We sent this to, um, Paul and Tim, and um, they sent back some good feedback. So we'll kind of be, I think actually we're meeting with them tomorrow. Yes. And we're going to go through the comments that Tim provided and try to work those in. So still a bit of a, a working draft, but. Um, I think I hear they're trying to revitalize the towns and go ahead and go Yeah. 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 Trying to be a little bit flexible and allow people to come in and do things that make sense and really focus on having things look and feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and allowing, you know, the last from our, from our public uh, presentation, but seeing the uh, overwhelming thing that they wanted. Yeah. There's a there's a massive difference between the, the most beautiful property that's there and the and the most neglected price. Healthy. The disparity is massive. There's a and so you know we've got to try to figure out how to move properties in this direction without making people write checks. Right? I mean, that, that's really the goal. Um, so okay. it's a good idea. This is step one. Is there anybody who is online who wants to comment on this? No comment, but I loved the conversation and I'm interested in seeing where it goes. Paul, do you want to share any thoughts? Well, I think the feedback is going. 
good ideas. Okay. Capture okay. for the yeah. You know, we need to try something. Thank you. Okay, is there, we have nothing under the executive session, so a uh, motion for adjourn will be in order. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mike. All those in favor? Aye. 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 For adjourn. Well, it's that's the record. 35. <laughs>